Hello, in this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to use Octave to solve a linear system of equations. So the system that we'll be working with is the one that you see here, okay? So basically we have three equations and three unknowns. So the goal here is to solve for X, Y, and Z such that when you plug them back into here, um, you get each of these will be a true statement, okay? So um, over here on the right side, we have, uh, this is basically Octave, okay? And this is the command window. And if you click down here, uh, this is the editor, okay? So whenever you're typing up a code in, um, in Octave, um, you wanna make sure that you do, it, do this in the editor mode. Um, so that way you can, um, you can work on it and then you can save it, go back, reopen the file and continue working on it. Okay, so that way you don't lose your work, okay? All right, so what I have here, is, so what you see here is that everything in green, uh, basically this is a comment. Um, so when the, so when you run the, when you run the code, um, it's going to ignore the line, right, that's in green. So it's gonna treat that just as a comment line. So it's not gonna execute that line, okay? And the other thing you notice here is that um, you have clear and, and CLC. So let me talk about those a little bit here, okay? So I'm gonna go back into the command window and let's just say that um, we wanna define x to be equals to one. So I say x equals to one. And what you should notice is that down here in this window, um, you'll see that there's the variable name and there's the class. Um, we're storing it as a, we're using this variable as a double and this is just a scalar value, which means it's one by one, okay? And there's the value of one that we store that into the variable, okay? So let's say, um, let's say I don't need this uh, variable anymore. Let's say I wanna clear it out. So what I can do is I can say clear X. So what that's gonna do is gonna remove the variable, okay? So you no longer see that variable here, okay? Um, the other thing is that, notice that when I type in X equals to one, right? It gives you back what you basically, what X is, okay? Now, if you type, okay, I'm gonna scroll down here a little bit. Now, if you type X equals to one semicolon, it's not going to basically display the result to the screen, okay? Uh, but again, it here you can see that um, we are using the variable X and we stored one into that variable, okay? All right, so um, you can either, you know, say clear X, okay? When you say clear X, that's gonna clear out the specific variable, okay? Or let's say you have more than one variable. Let's say you have x equals to one and y equals to two. Okay, so there's our two variables, okay? And if you wanna clear out all the variables, then you just say C-L-E-R, just type in clear. And it will clear out all the variables, okay? And then CLC will basically clear this command window out, okay? All right. So basically that's what these um, two commands are doing, okay? So it's always re recommended that you, um, that you have these um, before you start anything else, okay? So here's the, uh, basically here in the comment, this is the system that we'll be working with, okay? All right, so the first, um, there's basically three ways you can do this in Octave. So the first way I'm gonna show you is using the REF command. So that's basically using the uh, reduced row echelon form, okay? Uh, so the way you do that, okay, so I'm gonna use, okay, I'm gonna let A, so I'm gonna store our matrix into the variable A. So the way you do that is you, again, you're gonna look over here, you're gonna basically write out the coefficients. So from the first line, you see that we have one, two, one, and then zero. So we're gonna type in one, two, one, and then zero, and then we're gonna put in the second line, okay? So you put a semicolon to separate those, okay? So the second line we have minus three, minus one, two, and one. And again, that's coming from here. Minus three, negative one, two, and one, okay? Put another semicolon, that's gonna be our third row. So we have, so be careful here, we don't have X, so we need to put in zero as a placeholder, okay? and the coefficient in front of y is five and the coefficient in front of z is three. 
and then we have minus 1. Okay. Okay. So basically what we did is we took the, right, we have the, um, we took the values, the coefficient values here, and we added in these values. Okay. So basically this is your um, augmented system. Okay. And we can go ahead and put a semicolon there. Okay. Although it doesn't really matter. Okay. All right. So, okay. So I'm just going to enter. All right. So now to do the REF, it's basically just REF of, of A. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and I'll remove the semicolon for now. Um, so if you want to run this, basically go up here, run, and it's going to save the file. So I've already saved this. And then to see the result, go back to the command window. Okay, and there it is. So right here, um, this is your, this is the identity matrix, right? So this corresponds to X, Y, and Z. Those are your pivots. Okay, so X is going to be 0.6, Y will be negative 0.8, Z will be 1. And if you want to, um, if you want to put these in rational form, all you have to do is type in rats. So rats, and you type in rats answer and it will give you those values in rational form. Again, so x is 3 fifths, y is minus 4 fifths, and z is equal to 1. Okay. All right. And again, you can also, you can also do this here, rats a, if you want to um, get the answers in rational form. So just go up here, click, rerun the file, go back to the command window, and there it is. Okay. All right. So there's rats, but then, so that's going to give you the, so that's basically giving you the uh, rational form of the matrix. So we should say REFA here. Okay. All right. So let's run this again. And there it is. Okay. So make sure you have rats and then REF of A. Okay. All right. So that's one way you can do it. Uh, the other way is to... Um, is to use this command, a backslash b. Okay, so let me demonstrate that real quick here. Uh, so we already have a defined up here, so we don't need to redefine it again. Okay, um, however, um, well, we do, re we do need to redefine it because remember, when we define a, uh, we had these values here, we put in these values. So a here is acting as the augmented matrix. Um, so let's um, let's redefine this. Okay, again, I'm going to use A. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to put this time just 1, 2, 1. Okay, so that's coming from here. 1, 2, 1. Semicolon, minus 3, negative 1, and 2. Okay, and then we have the third line, 0, 5, and 3. So again, this is... So basically, just, this is just the um, coefficients on the left-hand side, okay? So basically, what we have here is our coefficient matrix. Now, we need to store uh, these values into a vector. So I'm going to call that B, okay? So it's going to be 0, 1, negative 1. So 0, 1, and negative 1. And we use semicolons um, to separate those. All right, so now we have A and B. So to solve the system, basically it's going to be A backslash B. Okay. So we just need to run this. Okay. And there it is. Okay, there's our output. And again, if you want to put this in rational form, what you can say is you can say rats A backslash B. Okay. And so go up here, run it, go back to the command window. And there's the rational form of the solution, okay? All right. Now, I do want to say something here real quick that um, notice for the system, we have a unique solution. However, but if we have a homogeneous solution, which means that the right-hand side is zero here, um, then you don't want to use the, you don't want to use the a backslash command um, here, a backslash b command here. Uh, because it's going to give you an, um, basically, basically it's going to give you a warning message, 
or some kind of error message and it will tell you that um, the solution will be the zero vector, which is obviously true, right? If you have the homogeneous solution, then, you, um, then you're always gonna have the zero solution. But um, remember that for a, a homogeneous solution, you may, um, you know, especially if you have a, if you have a free variable, um, you're gonna have infinite solution set. Um, so for that, you wanna use the REF command. And then from there, um, you can basically get um, you can get your um, solution from there and write, out, write it out in parametric form. Okay. All right. So again, for homogeneous systems that have um, at least one free variable, um, for those systems you want to use the REF command. Okay. All right. So the third way of doing this is using the inverse. Okay. All right, so um, so again, uh, we already have A defined here, okay? We have our matrix. So basically, um, to use the inverse, so the way you find the inverse of a matrix in Octave is basically just type in I and V, okay? And we already have B defined up here, okay? All right, so what you do is basically take I and V, Okay, so you take the inverse of A times B, okay? All right, so the inverse of A, um, this is going to be a matrix, and then you multiply it by the vector B, okay? And then go ahead and run this, okay? Go back to the command window, and there it is, okay? All right. And again, if you want to put this in rational form, then just type in R-A-T-S, or just put rats. So type in, right, surround this with rats, with the rats command. So go up here, run it, and there you go, okay? Now the thing is, we can also, um, we can also store a result, okay? So basically what you see here um, is just displaying the result to the command window, but sometimes, we may need to use that result somewhere else, okay? So let me show you that here. Um, so going back up to the first one, okay? I'm going to say that, uh, I'm gonna call this, uh, let's call this S1. So you can say S1 equals two. So I'll call that solution one, S1. Here, call this S2. And here we can call this S3, okay? So you can actually, yeah, you can save your results. You can store your um, solutions into into variables. Okay. So there it is. Okay. So we run the ver we run the code, and you can see there's our variables. Okay. And so if I type S1, right, there's the right result from the first one. Okay. Because remember that we were using the um, REF command on this, right, uh, and our on our um, matrix here, okay, on the um, augmented matrix, okay, and then for uh, S2, we have this one, okay, so that was using the A backslash, com A backslash uh, B command, and then for the other one, we're using the inverse, so that was for S3, okay, so obviously we get the um, same solution for S1, S2, and S3, okay. All right, so, um, all right, so depending on where you are in the linear algebra course, um, you know, you know, you'll be talking about this later. Um, okay, you'll talk about how to, given a system, you'll talk about the conditions for which the um, for which the inverse exists. Okay, and if the in, the inverse of that matrix exists, then therefore you can uh, basically use that um, use that concept concept to solve the system okay all right and so uh, so yes so this is um, these are the three basic ways to um, solve a system uh, using octave okay so I'll go ahead and um, stop here and um, and uh, so I'll, I'll conclude here okay so um, have a um, have a nice day and uh, see see everyone next time